An Italian woman who was pregnant went to the United Kingdom to take a course to train her to be a flight attendant. Well, she got sick. Police came and took her to a psychiatric hospital where she was sedated and her baby was delivered by cesarean section by court order without her even knowing about it. And to this day, more than a year later, the baby has not been returned to the mother. It's an international incident now as courts in Italy and Britain battle it out. And who better to join us to explain things and talk about it than our friend George Igler, the director of the Discourse Institute in London, England. George, welcome back to the show. Uh, hello there, Ezra. Yes, this is an extremely distressing case. And it's given Britain um, an opportunity to see what's been happening to um, its own mothers for several years. It's actually taken a foreign national, this um, Italian air hostess who suffered from bipolar disorder, um, who had an attack of some kind when she, uh, when she was in the UK to be sectioned under the Mental Health Act. And she came within the remit of something that is known and very little known about called the forced adoption scandal where municipal authorities, local councils, in this case Essex County Council, their workers and social workers actually profit. They make profits. They have performance targets in order to take away people's children and have them forcefully adopted away. And because it's such a profit-making exercise, a bureaucratic um, infrastructure has grown up around this, which makes it a conveyor belt that if your children cross um, into the path of this of this uh, scandal, um, then your children will be taken away from you. The issue is that most people haven't, have no idea that this takes place in Britain. There's been one veteran journalist by the name of Christopher Booker who's made it his life's mission to, to reveal this to Britain. And the other key figure here that we have to mention is Sir James Munby, who's the head of the family courts under whose aegis of secrecy all this stuff takes place. And he, earlier on in the year, has said that he wants to bring this culture of secrecy to an end, that it's incompatible with Anglo-Saxon traditions of justice. And this is why we have knowledge of this case today. Huh. Well, I mean, it's, it's incredible to me that a woman can you know, go to a hospital, maybe she has a mental illness, I mean, maybe she wasn't taking her meds, but without notice to her, she was not at the hearing, without notice to her next of kin, without notice to her home country's courts in Italy, an order is made to take that baby out of her tummy, and she never saw the baby again. I mean, that's just so, I wouldn't even call that Soviet. I mean, I don't even think the Soviets did that. That's, that's beyond the, human. The, the question it... The questions that fundamentally raised here are questions of sovereignty as to who owns what and who says and what people who, as I said, this happens to thousands upon thousands of British mothers up and down the country every year, but thousands? not even How? Britain's oh, oh, own press know about it. On, on what Not pretext? even Britain's press knows about it. I, well, I mean... Well, it, um... It, do British moms, do, do their next of kin, uh, are they informed? Are, are dads informed? I mean, what, what got me here is sort of the sneak attack ambush. It was literally a kidnapping. I mean, a bunch of government officials parents, said, take parents the baby. Parents are forbidden by the system. Pre parents are forbidden by the system to uh, tell, to discuss the issue with anyone and face prison and have been imprisoned until recently for telling their own children that they love them. Uh, you have to understand that this is a, is a bureaucratic system in which if a notice is issued by a local authority uh, that they consider your child to be quote unquote at risk, there is a 97%, 97% chance that you will never see that child again. And what it is having, making British people realize is that they live in a country where their conceptions of justice, conceptions of what are the roles and responsibilities that the state has towards them is radically different from the reality, which is increasingly a secret judicial system, which not even the press are allowed to penetrate, let alone the people who are involved in it are allowed to discuss outside the courts. Well, tell me the names of some of these laws. I'd like to look them up because this sounds quite strange. I mean, this sounds un-Canadian, and of course, all our legal traditions of, of rule of law and, and, and uh, fair procedures come from the mother country, the United Kingdom. What are the names of the laws that uh, it, uh, would affect the kids and the names of the laws that would silence essentially them? The, 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 
that the, there are already being questions finally being asked in Parliament about this. Douglas Carswell, a Conservative MP, has spoken about this. The key law in question is the Contempt of Court Act 1981. Uh, listen, after Lee Rigby was killed not far from here and David Cameron fled on May the 23rd after uh, a security briefing, this entire summer in Britain has had uh, Islamic terrorist attacks, Salafist attacks on bases, decapitations. Not even the press has known about this because as prosecutions have happened in court under the contempt of court act where local journalists are not even allowed to tell members of this town what is happening why there is such a police presence it's the contempt of court act 1981 that has created uh, uh, basically Britain's secret judicial system. Now, I am aware of a strange legal creation in the UK called the super injunction, which is an injunction to, to like, a, we call them a publicity ban or a publication ban, but the super injunction element is you're not even allowed to talk about the fact that the ban exists. Is this what you're referring to? These super injunctions that shut everyone no, up no, and no, then no, shut no, everyone that, up? That, that, so, so, Super injunctions are more to do with libel law. This is specifically the Contempt of Court Act. The mother is brought before the court and the social workers, often it's an individual who hasn't even seen the child in question or spoken to the mother in question. They say the to the judge that this information being revealed might be, could be distressing to the child. And because the court considers that its ultimate responsibility is to maintain um, the best interests of the child, all these things happen behind closed doors. But once you have that judicial system happening behind, uh, in a cloak, behind public scrutiny, that's when you have all this malfeasance, this corruption, these utter scandals that go on without even the local British press knowing a thing. Geez, well, maybe we need some American journalists protected by their First Amendment to break the stories on the other side of the Atlantic. Maybe that's the way that the UK will be liberated. That would Wouldn't... certainly help. Yeah. Well, George, thanks so much for joining us from London to tell us about this terrifying story. Appreciate your time. Yes, this is an extremely distressing case. And it's given Britain um, an opportunity to see what's been happening to um, its own mothers for several years, where municipal authorities, local councils, in this case, Essex County Council, their workers and social workers actually profit. They make profits. They have performance targets in order to take away people's children and have them forcefully adopted away. And because it's such a profit-making exercise, a bureaucratic um, infrastructure has grown up around this, which makes it a conveyor belt that if your children cross um, into the path of this, of this uh, scandal, um, then your children will be taken away from you. The issue is that most people have, have no idea that this takes place in Britain. The questions that fundamentally raised here are questions of sovereignty as to who owns what and who says, and what people who, as I said, this happens to thousands upon thousands of British mothers up and down the country every year, but thousands? not even Ow. Britain's oh, oh, oh. own press know about it. Parents are forbidden by the system to uh, tell, to discuss the issue with anyone, and face prison and have been imprisoned until recently for telling their own children that they love them.